So this is basically going to be an entire story time in one. And I can't believe I'm actually doing this. This is like five to seven different stories. So if you want to go grab a soda or popcorn. So back when I was 15 years old, I got into a relationship. I was very new to the dating world. I never did anything with a guy. I, I never like made out with a guy really like maybe once when I was in eighth grade and it was like three seconds. Like I never like was exposed to that. And I was a sophomore in high school and this senior in high school decides he wants to ask me out. So obviously I fell for him. I fell for him really hard because not only was I so young and naive, but I was very, very freaking infatuated. It was happening really fast. I made a promise to God that I wouldn't um, do anything extreme. We were going through like the typical steps of a relationship when a girl is very inexperienced. And this is when I was 15. It was very, very young. We started dating in October and February rolls around and he's starting to make some contact with this girl that he says they were just friends. And it's making me uncomfortable, but I didn't I didn't want to tell him how I felt because I was scared he'd break up with me if I told him that it was bothering me, that I didn't want him to be that close to a girl. I didn't want to seem controlling. I didn't want to give him any reason to break up with me. I gave in and did something I regret. And the only reason I gave in to that was because I was scared I was, if I don't do this, then I'm going to lose him to another girl. Then I found out in June that that two weeks after I did this thing, he cheated on me. And he continued to cheat on me. I knew it and I didn't want to confront him about it because I just wanted to keep him and I wanted, I had it in my head, I just, no matter what he did, I wanted to win him from this girl. I didn't want, I didn't want her to win. I didn't want to break up with him so that he's single and she could have him. I just wanted him to myself and it was very unhealthy. I wish I could tell myself what I know now, but this cheating story doesn't end there. It doesn't, unfortunately. So then he went to college the next year and he told me in the beginning of the summer, he literally tells me, um, I think I want to go into college single. I don't know. I'm gonna let you know at the end of summer. So then I had horrible anxiety the entire summer trying to please him, making sure he doesn't break up with me when he goes to school. I even remember that summer we were in his car and his phone starts going off and it says the girl's name with a contact picture like, and she was like on his phone. So I knew him and this girl were really close. We're gonna call her Kay. Kay was like his first girl, like my sophomore year leading into my junior year, he was so close to her, made me very uncomfortable. It ended up being the girl he cheated on me with. So then he started college and A got in the picture. A, like Pretty Little Liars. This girl named A um, grabbed his attention. I had no idea. Now piecing it all together, I see why. Randomly one day over Christmas break of my junior year, while he's, he's a freshman in college, he broke up with me out of the blue. I told him, you promised you wouldn't leave me, and he said, but I gave you a great year and a half. It's time for me to move on. I was devastated. He broke up with me for a weekend and then decided to get back with me on a Monday, and I thought that was very fishy. Two years later, my friend S told me all about A. I had no idea about A that year. No idea. And I contacted A, and she told me it was true and that he broke up with me to get with her. She told me that he made out with her while he was still dating me and she said she wouldn't do more if he still had a girlfriend. So he broke up with me that weekend to do things with this girl and then got back together with me once he got it out of his system. So let's fast forward to my freshman year of college. Kay decided to transfer to my college and she started going there. She was in the same grade as my ex and I thought he made it sound like he wasn't talking to her anymore. I promise I'm not going to talk to her. I know it makes you uncomfortable, whatever. And then all of a sudden, I caught them texting each other. And then before I knew it, I was in the cap, and she comes up to me and goes, want to see what your boyfriend's been texting me? And I'll admit, I egged it on. I, like, flipped her off in the calf and everything. I wasn't innocent. Like, she was. it was bothering me that she was just trying with my boyfriend, you know? So not only did I find out that he was texting her all year when he told me he wasn't, but this is when it gets bad. That Christmas, um, my freshman year of college, my parents really supported him. They truly thought I was going to end up with him. We were dating for three years at this point. They decided to buy him a MacBook computer because he was graduating college that spring and they knew his family didn't have the means to support him and buy him a laptop to try to get a job. One day in April, it was actually 
like the day before Good Friday. I was looking on his computer. I was like, why is there Skype on your computer? We haven't Skyped in years. Oh my gosh, you just got this computer. Why would you download Skype? And I was messing around and I went on Skype and all of a sudden my face went blank. I was reading a conversation between him and his other girl of like nine months. He pretty much had another girlfriend from August till April. And every time we got in a fight, he was telling her, Gabby's done with me, now we can be together. I've never felt so let on in my life. He broke up with me when I found out, first of all, because he said he didn't feel like being punished about it, or he didn't want to deal with me being upset about it. Which I understand, but you shouldn't have done it in the first place. You should have broken up with me. So, I went to his house like an idiot, with a photo album and videos on my phone ready to show him, and I begged for him back like an idiot because I felt like I wasn't anyone without him. I felt like I couldn't do anything without him in my life. I showed up to his house, I somehow won him back. His mom's like fighting him to break up with me, I remember. I begged for him back, I got him back, and then we're on the way up to my beach house for the 4th of July, and I'm stalking this girl's Tumblr, and all of a sudden I see she posted a picture of a long ass letter that he wrote her for her birthday. And basically you could just see he was in love with her. Now it's like my sophomore year of college, and we're, we were at, we actually got really good, and like I said in that one video, we were the best that we were, but at this point, we shouldn't have even been together. And then, all of a sudden, I stumbled across someone in my sophomore class in college. I decided to text my ex and be like, yo, can we take a break? Because I'm feeling some kind of way about someone. And he, he refused to let me. Then, I like, borderline got back with my ex slash basically just talking but acting like we're dating and then that's when I met Colin. Moral of the story guys, if any of you are going through an emotionally abusive situation, if you guys feel like you're alone or you feel like you need a guy to be you, you don't. You don't need anyone. I don't need Colin. For all I know, Colin could do the same fucking thing that my ex did to me. I'm not saying he's perfect. I'm never gonna say he's perfect. I never in a million years thought my ex would do all that to me. You just shouldn't stay with someone because you feel like you need them. You don't need anybody. You were you before you met this person. You're capable of being you for many more years without that person. I don't want to be that YouTuber that like cries and asks for pity, so I'm going to not do that. One person could change your whole outlook on such a beautiful gift of life. That's what's so scary. And I decided to silently go through all this. I never posted anything online when I was going through all this. I was so deep into YouTube when all this shit was happening to me. My first meet and greet, my Sugar Babe Cupcakes meet and greet, was five days after I found out my ex had a girlfriend of like nine months. The, like nobody, nobody would know that. I just want you guys to know that if you're ever in need of anyone, like I'm here, tweet me. DM me. I'm always on the lookout for that kind of stuff. I just want you to know, and even if I don't find your comment or if I don't respond, I just want you to know, like, I'm here for you. I feel for you. I love you. You don't need anyone. You were born a single person for a reason. Yes, it's human nature to be with someone, but you don't need someone to be you. And to my ex, if you're watching this, I'm sorry. I didn't say your name for a reason. I don't want to affect your future anymore. I feel so much better now that I got all this off my chest. This has just been like a long time in the making. I've just really wanted to say something and I never did because I was scared of being judged. All right, I love you guys. Until next time.